best of the best do it all at Iowa Western. Hey, one of the best in the state kicks it into high gear again. One of the best in the state kicks it into high gear again. The Falcons take aim at the Eagles and then the Titan. Some Reaver wrestlers take down their future. Just sign here. Hi, I'm Terry Hanna. My son Zach plays for the Iowa Western Reavers and the Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Now the Iowa Western track and field team is flexing its muscle. The Reavers' best all-around athletes are running, jumping, and throwing it with the best of them. The Region 11 multi-championships are on full display in Council Bluffs. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, for the men it's the decathlon. 10 events, and for the women, the heptathlon, seven events, with competition spread over two days. So if they're not running, well, then they're jumping. If they're not jumping, then they're throwing. Everything but the kitchen sink. Overcast, cold, and rainy for day one. Now the men compete in five events, the women, four. Men's 100, Iowa Central wins it. The Reavers Isaac Reiselman takes second. Women's 100 hurdles. The Tritons post the best time again, but Iowa Western's Kellyanne James finishes second. Sixth, Connor Young. Men's long jump. Big Blue's Connor Young flies the farthest, over 22 feet, 11 inches. It's great to come out here and uh, it's PR regionals. I mean, that's what we work all year for. So it was good to do that. Women's high jump. The home team's Kelsey Hurley clears five feet three and three quarter inches. I thought I did pretty good uh, considering the weather and it's all wet outside, cold. So after the first day, the Reavers Connor Young holds a slim lead on the men's side. And the ladies, Iowa Western's Kellyanne James in front by over 200 points. Day two, men's 110 hurdles. Big Blue's Isaac Weiselman crosses the line first, 15 7 9. Women's long jump. Mark, woo! There you go. The Reavers, Kellyanne James wins it 18 feet, 4 plus inches. Men's discus, last throw for Iowa Western's Lens McCone. That a boy. That a boy. Just beats out teammate Connor Young with a throw over 119 feet, 4 inches. Women's javelin. Once again, it's the Reavers, Kellyanne James, over 104 feet, 8 inches. Mark. Finally, the women's. 800. Iowa Western's Lisa Blackwood in second place after the first of two laps, but Blackwood makes the pass, takes the tape, and a winning time, 253-10. Good job, ladies! Teammate Kellyanne James labors in seventh, but wins the women's heptathlon by over 300 points. It means a lot. I've been practicing and training for this all the time, and it's like, I can't even believe it myself. This is what I waited for. The men finish up first with the pole vault. The Reavers' Lens McCone easily wins it, clearing 15 feet, 4 inches. Next, the javelin. Big Blue's Isaac Reiselman lets it fly. Winning throw over 153 feet, and finally to the grueling 1,500 meter run three and three quarter times around the track. Iowa Western's Isaac Reiselman grabs the early lead. <laughs> Bell lap, Iowa Central is in front for good. The Triton guts it out to the line first. Reiselman right behind, but when it's all said and done. 6,124 points, Lenz McCone. The Reavers Lenz McCone wins his first decathlon by a mere nine points over Connor Young. Surprised? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna lie to you. <coughs> uh, because I haven't really trained the way I feel like I should have, but I mean, I came out a winner today and I'm happy about it. We have one of the top multis groups in the country, men's and women's, and you know, the expectations are there for that group. So, you know, anything can happen, but uh, you, you, 
you know, you hope that it all comes together on the biggest meet of the season for these kids. I want it, baby. So the Reavers sweep the Region 11 men's decathlon and women's heptathlon. Next up, the Regional Track and Field Championships. Just as the track season shifts into high gear, same deal for the Reavers softball team. It's do or die at the regional tournament. Second seeded Iowa Western knocks off number three Muscatine seven to five. Mother Nature, rain steps in. Then two days later, top seeded Indian Hills humbles the Reavers 10 to two. Now Big Blue stays alive by knocking out Marshalltown five to one. So it's a rematch with the Hills for the regional championship and gotta beat them twice. Iowa Western wins the first three to one. Then in a winner take all showdown, Indian Hills prevails seven to three. So the Reavers are done. But hey, after what this club endured, new coach just before the season, Ben Greer and the girls should be proud. Iowa Western finishes its season at 40 and 24. Get them next year. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marshalltown with a little payback to Raritan's Reavers to the tune of seven to four and four to one. Seventh ranked Iowa Western comes back and shuts out M-Town six to zip and seven nothing. The Reavers record now 39 and 12. And how about this? Former Iowa Western offensive guard Sebastian Tritola is the first in school history to be drafted. Now Tritola, a member of the 2013 Reavers, selected in the sixth round by the Tennessee Titans. The 6'4", 314-pound road grader kicked off his career at Nevada. Red-shirted, then played four games before coming to Council Bluffs. Now, Tritola started the past two seasons at Arkansas, where he was named first-team All-SEC in 2015. So way to go, Sebastian Tritola, the first former Reaver to hear his name called in the NFL draft. Also, former receiver Geronimo. Geronimo Allison agrees to a free agent deal with the Packers. Gmo, who was the top receiver at Illinois last year, joins former Reaver running back Don Jackson. Now, Jackson just wrapped up his college career at Nevada. Former O-lineman Larry Mazik earns a tryout with Tampa Bay. And joining him, DB Isaiah Johnson. Rodney Coe agrees to a tryout with the Cowboys, and LB Ryan Langford gets a try with the Texans. So Iowa Western continues to make its presence felt with the big boys in the National Football League. Good luck to all. One bunch left kicking and screaming when it was all over, and the other, bragging rights, baby. But up next, business as usual for some Titans and Saints when we come back. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. At the Council Bluffs Recycling Center, we're proud of the effort our community makes to help keep Council Bluffs beautiful by participating in our curbside recycling program. Here are some tips to make sure your recyclables are accepted. If you're confused about plastics, we can help. Numbers one through five plastic food and beverage containers are acceptable. Usually the recycling triangle and the number inside are located on the bottom of containers. Items we don't take include number six and seven plastics, styrofoam, or bags of any sort, although we encourage recycling plastic bags inside local grocery stores. Please be sure to check the calendar in our annual mailer or on our website to find out what items will be picked up each week. Blue Week items for your curbside bin include paper, cardboard, and glass containers. Green Week items for your curbside bin include plastic food and beverage containers, tin and aluminum containers, and tin foil. Thank you for helping us keep Counts of Bluffs beautiful. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Counts of Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. I mean, half their matches aren't even close. I mean, they're over by halftime. By halftime, it's true. And of course, I'm talking about the Lewis Central girls soccer team. 
And if I've said it once, I'll say it again. If these Titans don't at least make it to state and win at least one match, then the season, it's a bust to me. And others I've talked to have agreed. Now here's IDUB TV student Dylan Lindbergh. Second ranked Lewis Central hosts the one and five Crescent Panthers. Titans get an early goal, then in the third minute, Alyssa Pomeranke lets it fly. She scores to give LC the two nothing advantage. Goal by Alyssa Pomeranke. Home team on the attack again, Kelsey McSorley to Ali Demi Turco in the fifth minute to make it three nil. Five minutes later, Demi Turco again scores her second goal of the day. Lewis Central claiming a four nothing lead. 13th minute, McSorley scores her third goal to complete the hat trick. Titans up 7 0. The junior gets behind the defense. McSorley finds the back of the net for the fourth time in the match. Home team blows out the visitors 11 0. We're playing well enough to, to do well. And, and, you know, the end of the season is the most, impart, most important part of our season. So um, I think from this point forward, with the games we're going to have in this tournament and any of the non-conference uh, games, we've tried to set up against good teams. And I, I think those type of battles, whether we win or lose, we're going to learn from those and, and really continue to be ready to make that next step. I think our possession really worked and we did a really good job on finishing. Sometimes the games that we win like by a lot of points, like all of our shots are off, but today we did really good. and. Got to work, I think. We need to keep working hard at practice. Uh, I think that towards the middle of the season, it kind of starts to slow down, and games like this, we kind of we're ready for some competition, a lot of competition. Lewis Central has outscored its opponents 51 to three in their six wins. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Dylan Lindbergh. Thanks, Dylan. And then there's St. Albert. The Saints, as always, not too far behind. It seems like they make it to state every year. And this season, same deal. Seventh ranked St. Albert gets together for its annual tug of war with Glenwood. Nothing comes easy. First half, Rams with the cross. Almost. Now the home team appears to get on the board with under 10 minutes to go in the half. Emily Kaysen finds the back of the net, but the ref rules offsides, no goal. Bundled up, scoreless at the break. Not even five minutes into the second half, St. Albert's Maggie Wettengale sends one in. Oh, Chloe Neeson one times it, and the Saints grab a one zip lead. The visitors, five shots on goal. Just whiffs it wide right. Rams keeper Riley Spawn keeps Glenwood in it. One of her 19 saves. <laughs> Seconds left in the match. The Rams point blank. Yeah. Taylor Bardsley. Oh. So close. The Saints hold off Glenwood 1-0. Pretty even in the first half. In the second half, we came out and had, oh, I think we outshot them on goal 9-1. to one. And they were quality shots. Their goalie was incredible. I mean, she was their MVP. Tell me about the goal. Um, I thought the assist was really good. And I don't know, I just kicked it with my left foot and I happened to go in. I think this one has been the best that I've ever played on. We have a lot of potential and I just can't wait to see how we develop through the practices and as the season goes along. Potential to get back to the state tournament. We have bigger hopes than the state tournament this year. Uh, we might not get there, but we might make a little noise out there too if, uh, if things keep going uh, the, the way they're going now. The goal is their MVP. The Saints have now won three of four at home with their next three of four on the road. St. Albert sitting pretty at eight and two. The second ranked Titans drop two more across the river. Millard South shuts out the Titans two to zip and then Columbus Scotus clips LC two to one. TJ loses a couple as well and drops below the 500 mark. Abraham Lincoln, even Steven at five and five. All right, now wrestle with this. Three more Reavers, signed, sealed, and delivered. Hey, who delivers the knockout blow? The Eagles or the Falcons? 
after the break. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsman. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sports Med invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sports Med. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Your future is here at CBTV. You're in the game. You take the shots. It's your story. The Media Studies Program at Iowa Western. Real reality TV starring you. For more information, go to iwcc.edu. Again, I go back to last year's state tournament. St. Albert scores a final four finish, so don't let the regular season records fool you. These birds fly when it matters most. And after a slow start, the Falcons are once again beginning to spread their wings. And to prove it, St. Albert hits the pitch with one loss Underwood. Here's IDUP TV student Colton Emsweiler. The day is dark, but hopes are bright as St. Albert takes on Underwood. The Falcons rule the field in the first half. Charlie Donaldson throws it in to Rodrigo Barajas, gives it back to Donaldson, but the senior shot is stopped by Chase Brand. The home team, nine shots overall. St. Albert can play defense too. Off the corner kick, keeper Kyle Barnes denies Jake Daughter of the would-be header. The game is scoreless at halftime. Just seven minutes into the second, the Eagles' Colin Obstavet gets the cross-field pass, jukes the Falcon defender, and puts it in. The senior with his team high seventh tally of the year. That goal proves to be the difference as Underwood shuts out St. Albert one nothing. Yeah, so we had a good offensive possession the first half of the game. A lot of uh, had it in their half a lot. Uh, and then we started not playing it outside as much and uh, they started playing it down in our half. And uh, that's when they got their goal. So we need to work on playing the ball outside more and get more pos uh, possession up top and balls crossed in so we can get more goals. Uh, first half, we dominated. Uh, we had a couple opportunities, a couple corners and a free kick where uh, we probably should have finished. And that might have made a big difference in the game. We're, we're not done. We'll see him again. St. Albert looks for redemption. The Falcons play both rivals, LC and TJ, next. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Colton Emsweiler. Thanks, Colton. Now, if that's not enough for St. Albert, how about this next one? The birds fly across town to kick it with Lewis Central. That's right, no other words needed. Here's IDUB TV student Brandon Tiverti. It's the Battle of the Bluffs, Falcons versus Titans. Early in the first half, off the corner kick, sophomore Luke Waters with the goal. Turns out the starting QB is also pretty good at soccer. 1-0 St. Albert, 13th minute, the ball is deflected off the goalie. Andrew Hannafin is there to take advantage of the mistake. SA up 2-0. Nothing in life comes free, unless it's soccer. Rodrigo Barajas launches the ball in the net. 
Moments later, sophomore Antonio Ramos gets his shot at a free goal, but the keeper does his best with tumble impression saying, no, 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 not today. 3-0 Falcons at half. Early in the second half, Elsie's Brendan O'Brien scores. But like my credit card, it's denied. Offsides, still 3-0 St. Albert. The Titans are able to attack and almost score, but Elsie is shut down. SA wins 3-0. The Falcons are 2-0 in city play. I think we just need to pick up the intensity in the warm-ups, you know. Uh, we need to find the early goals. If we put a goal in early, that game is completely different. This is about the third or fourth game where we haven't started the first 10 or 15 minutes. That has to be on me a little bit, as well as the players just getting themselves ready for the game. So um, once we figure out how to start a few games and put together a couple of goals, I know we'll improve throughout the rest of the year and uh, get it right before Substate. We were all pretty pumped up because it was a city team, and uh, those games are always really fun to play in. So we had a lot of motivation coming into this. I think that helped a little bit. Everybody played hard, and it was pretty clean. I didn't, there was no, no, no cards, uh, didn't get chippy or anything. Nobody was hooting and hollering, and uh, we'll take it. They, our guys did a workmanlike job, and, and I'm proud of them. They played really well today. Lewis Central has lost three straight to St. Albert. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brandon Taverdi. Thanks, Brandon. So St. Albert now sits in an even seven and seven. LC drops to three and seven. Same story for Thomas Jefferson. And Abraham Lincoln, even worse at one and eight. Up next, our play of the week. Hey, it's not every day you see this. It's the day for our grappling trio of Reavers on the other side. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, exactly. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. And you know, I'm really gonna miss these guys. True gladiators. They've been through a lot, but they've been through it together. I'm talking about some Reaver wrestlers. They've really left an impression on me as well as Iowa Western. They're some of the building blocks that this program now rests on, and they're moving on. He walks into the 149 pound final at Nationals last year. He's a two time All American. Next stop for the Reavers, Oscar Ramirez, Division II Augustana in Sioux Falls. I felt it was the right fit. I felt what I felt with Coach Watts when I talked to him. I felt like I was at home, and they believe in me, so I might as well give it a try. 2015 All-American Jalen Flanders will give it a try. The 184-pounder has pinned his way back home to Florida and NAIA Southeastern University. This is a great fit. I took a visit down there with my grandparents and my nephew, and they really liked it. And after I went there, I like thought about other schools, but nothing really felt right. It just felt right as soon as I was there. 
And finally, there's the two-time All-American at 133. Clay Stein will next go for the pin at D2 Drury in Missouri. It's uh, close to the school that I won my state title at, about 15 minutes away. And grandma's down there, you know, so close to home. And then another thing that really appealed to me was it's a new program just starting next year. These guys are probably going to remember them for the rest of my life. Yeah, I've been through up and downs with them, went to war with them, and it's, I, t I feel like they're my brothers. Iowa Western just, you know, it, it, brings a lot, it brings a lot out of you, you know. There's just a lot of tradition, a lot of athletes, a lot of people striving to be the best, and uh, it's a good environment. They really do say that you meet your best friends in college, and that's the truth, man. These guys are my brothers, and I'd do anything for them. These three have made a difference. Three more building blocks on which the Iowa Western Wrestling Program now stands is even stronger than ever. Thanks for the memories and good luck. Turning to some golf. Four? National Tournament in Melbourne, Florida. Here come the Reavers. The Iowa Western men finished second at the District 3 event and is on its way. Alistair Balcombe finishes fourth. Nick Louie ties for 11th. The Reavers men's golf team qualifies for nationals in the Sunshine State. It tees off May 17th and runs through the 20th. The ladies on par as well. Iowa Western wins the regional championship by 53 strokes. 53 strokes. The tournament limited to just 27 holes due to weather. Now, Senna Ursoy takes top medalist honors. Three Reavers finish in the top five. So next up for the women, the Nationals in two weeks at Daytona Beach, Florida. Take me with you. <laughs> so congrats to head coach Derek Thompson. The Iowa Western men's and women's golf teams are off to Nationals. Good deal. And now it's time for our play of the week. Bought to you by the Univista University. The Region 11 Multi-Meet. Iowa Western's Lens McCone in fourth place after the first day. The sophomore wins two of the last four events and takes top honors in the men's decathlon. Lens McCone with our player plays of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by the Univista University. Call 712-749-1990 to register today. And the hits just keep on coming. Now, plenty more comings next week as well. We'll have a couple of stories from the Iowa Western Spring football game, more from the Region 11 track and field championships, and much, much more. Now, remember, as always, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Zach Harper Blunt. And so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.